Black Breastfeeding Week marks a celebration of connection and community, a time to honor the bonds within Black families and uplift how reducing barriers to breastfeeding improves health outcomes. As we continue to support families with breastfeeding, we're actually supporting the building of communities. We're building healthier and more thriving communities. And we know that it reduces the risk of SIS, which is sudden infant death syndrome, by about 50%. Um, so that's a big deal when we think about, you know, risk of infant mortality, especially within that first year. Um, and then, of course, for Black babies, since they are more likely, they have that higher percentage of passing before their first birthday. So when we think about benefits of breastfeeding for moms, we think about reduction in in uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer risk, which are obviously very, very serious and things that we would want to reduce our risk for. Um, we also think about the short-term risk in terms of reducing postpartum hemorrhage, which is you know, one of the leading causes of maternal morbidities here in this country. Asaya Harville with Cherished Futures for Black Moms and Babies under the Public Health Alliance of Southern California is working with hospitals to address deep-rooted inequities that make Black families families less likely to breastfeed. In the U.S., black mothers are nine times more likely to be offered formula in hospitals than white moms. In Los Angeles, neighborhoods with the highest infant mortality rates also have the fewest lactation resources. We have disparities in breastfeeding because of the disparities we see for maternal and child health, maternal and infant health. They're very much mirrored to the breastfeeding rates. Intergenerational trauma from a painful past of black women being forced to nurse their enslavers infants also plays a role. We have to really start to bring together the narrative with the data, identify the gaps, identify opportunities for improvement, but also dispelling myths that have now been passed down as a result of chattel slavery. We think about, you know, myths around, well, they just want to formula feed anyway, but we don't think about the impact of lack of paid maternity leave, right? And so what does that do for black and brown women who are already being pay underpaid? Um, they don't have as much leave time. Cherished Futures is teaming up with hospitals like Antelope Valley Medical Center to make transformative changes. Nurse Yvonne Reifenstahl says before the collaboration, there were no black breastfeeding specific initiatives. Now staff receive regular learnings about culturally congruent strategies. It's really important for our nursing staff to understand um, that history and how that history has shaped the black culture in regards to the choice to breastfeed. Reifenstahl is proud of Antelope Valley Medical Center's new free monthly black breastfeeding community support group. She adds that the medical center now sends lactation consultants to support families in formula only feeding rooms. So giving these moms and babies the benefits of breastfeeding and creating positive experiences for them can begin a cultural shift in the view of breastfeeding and hopefully lead to more black families choosing to get breast milk. In less than a year of working with Cherished Futures, Antelope Valley Medical Center has raised exclusive black breastfeeding rates from 40 to 70%. Lactation consultations with black patients also increased from 30 to 100 percent. Reifenstahl says these changes are just the start and encourages other hospitals to get involved. It's really overwhelming at the beginning when you're first looking at this big picture institutional changes. Um, but even a small change, just taking one step, uh, can can lead to significant results. Um, and once that one step is taken, it really leads the way it opens up to the next step and starts to just create a path. We can't change history, but we can change present in order to affect the future.